this is my 2002 EP3 Civic Type R and today I'm going to try and replace the master control unit it's often called the MICU and my Honda's got the classical problem where no dome light, uh, no AC, no intermittent wipers, uh, parking brake light stays on and there's one other thing but basically it doesn't really affect the drivability of the car it's just kind of annoying so a couple of things I'll show you guys today and hopefully we can uh, help you guys out if you're doing it again in the future yourself so I actually ordered this from Japan there's the part number you can see if you guys have an O2 JDM EP3 Civic Type R this appears to be the right one it was about 300 bucks um, not very easy to find here there's probably a crossover one that works but I couldn't find any information online so this is what I'm using and this is basically what the master control unit is it's basically just the main control fuse box unit of the car so there's the Honda part number as well in the box, on the side. And it's just a question of disconnecting a bunch of the plugs. And it comes preloaded with all the required fuses. And then it looks like it's just plug and play. Each plug appears to be a different size. So it doesn't look like there's any chance of really cross plugging or anything like that. So yeah, give it a shot, see as it goes. Hopefully it's pretty straightforward. And we're just going to go ahead and pop the hood. And what you want to do is disconnect the negative battery. Let's try to do this with one hand. There we go. Okay. And we're going to disconnect the negative part of the battery here. Uh, usually a 10 mil socket or wrench will take care of that and then we're ready to do any work on the car. Alright, there we go. Just make sure you tuck that away so it's not going to touch anything while you're working and potentially arc or fry some uh, expensive electrical components. And from what I've seen online, it appears that the actual MICU module is right underneath the steering wheel typically. And that doesn't appear to be different between left-hand drive and right-hand drive cars. As you can see, mine's a right-hand drive. So flip these tabs and pop that other one off there and I'll pop that open and show you guys what it's looking like inside so once we've taken off the fuse panel cover you can actually see the unit it's right here there's a 10 mil bolt right back there it's a little bit tucked behind some wiring cables so probably easier to use a wrench instead of a socket there's just not much room in there and there's another one at the top and then it appears as if that whole unit just bolts right out with the two bolts and then it's a question of uh, unplugging and replugging and and connecting the new one so i'll try and film that process and kind of explain what we're doing i've got uh, almost all the clips off at the back uh, not gonna lie they're actually pretty hard to access on this car at least some of the other videos i've seen on youtube it looked like people could just reach behind and clip them off with their fingers most of these came off that easily but there's one that's putting up a real fight so i've got a really small little uh, screwdriver to try and push down the little pin tab and a pretty small little set of needle nose pliers with some teeth on them i'm trying to grab the clip and push down the tab at the same time behind that but it's all at the top corner and it's hard to get so anyway I haven't got that back one off yet but I think what I'm going to try and do is take some of these front ones off and that might free up a little bit of space and give me a bit more room to maneuver the actual whole fuse box around 
and uh, potentially get to that back one a little easier. So anyway, not as easy as I thought for the back ones, but it's coming along, making some progress and uh, hopefully taking the front ones off will help. So if you look at this little yellow one here, for example, this is that little tab at the top I was telling you that you need to push down this. So if you push that down and then typically pull the thing out gently, don't grab it by the wires, but that one was loose anyway, and it comes right out. So unless you push down that tab, that's the little locking pin. They will not release. So. Finally got it off. This is basically what we're looking at. So if you actually open it up and separate, there's a couple of clips on each side here. I think there's three total on each side. If you open that up inside is basically like some pretty significant circuitry, you know, hundreds of different uh, soldering connections and capacitors and fuses and all kinds of stuff. So. Um, Basically, when this thing fails, I haven't seen too many people that have actually tried to repair these. Um, it's probably far easier with all the electronics involved to just replace the unit. So these are all the clips that were on the back. This is the front side. And as I showed you guys earlier, the new one comes preloaded with a bunch of the fuses and everything. So it should just be plug and play. And you've got a whole big nest of wires and plugs and everything just kind of hanging out back here as you can see there's quite a bunch of them and uh, those basically get plugged in what i'm going to do is plug them all in and then connect the negative battery on the cable back again and then i'm going to see if i have my issues taken care of before i physically bolt this back in and slide it up because this unit's actually designed, it slides on a rail system here. So there's a rail on each side. So I was actually mistaken when I said there was two bolts. There's only the one bolt on each side. So 10 mil, easy to find right down at the bottom here. So yeah, let me get the new one plugged in and we'll see how we're doing. So one thing I had to do, this is the old one. Um, the new one didn't come preloaded with these so i just had to remove them from the old one they were straightforward there's just a little clip on each side there and there basically for all four uh you just have to make sure you push them down really hard because there's quite a bit of resistance to load them into the new board so just make sure you push down all the way until those clips catch and you'll hear them kind of make a little bit of a click and then you know you've got a nice tight connection starting to replace some of the clips i got a couple of the back ones in but basically what it goes like is that each cluster of clips is connected to something next door to the other cluster so it's just a question of finding some of the pins that line up like that and obviously we've got a really big one here and these top little tabs always are pointed to the top for proper orientation and like this should probably go in here oh, no. oh there we go oh look nope, not as well okay we'll go back to that guy and if you just do each cord as you go like each group of plugs there's probably very little chance that you're going to miss anything Okay, so after a fair amount of struggling, I finally got the uh, all of the clips back in. There's definitely not a sequence you need to follow, but there's a sequence that makes it easier just due to the length of the wires on the clips. A lot of them are actually pretty short. It's not enough room to kind of take them over or under other wires. So definitely if I'm doing this again, I'm going to try and pay exact attention to the way the wires are routed but anyway got all the clips back in uh should be all connected up i don't think i missed anything so just tightening up the negative battery on the negative uh, terminal on the battery here and 
we're gonna get the car fired up and see if we've solved the problem. Okay, we've got the negative terminal and the battery hooked up nice and tight. I've checked all the plug fittings and connections on the new MICU. Everything seems secure. I'm just gonna fire it up and see if we've solved any of our problems. Okay, that's a good sign. Gonna release the parking brake. Parking brake light goes off. Let's check if we have working AC. Nice, AC works perfectly. Dome light is on. Intermittent wipers are working. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we have key chime, dome light, intermittent wipers, working AC, and the parking brake light is off. So that's the five main problems that a failed MICU shows up as. This affects cars, most Honda Civics and Accords from about 2000 onward from what I've read. If you guys uh, want to see any more videos like this, please shoot me a comment and uh, leave a message below. If anyone has any knowledge on how to clear that check engine light, it's been on for months and I haven't had much luck with all the stuff I found on the internet. So shoot me a message and hopefully we can get that taken care of. And if you guys want to see any more tutorials and self-help videos like this for any of the maintenance on the cars that we own, please shoot me a message, like, subscribe, follow along and uh, we'll keep making them. Thanks a lot.